In this video, we're going to look at simplifying a radical expression. So we're, we're going to look at simplifying the 14th root of x to the 30th. So before we get started, um, we need to remember this rule of how to move back and forth between radical form and um, exponent form. When we have some index here, this n is our index, that can translate to the denominator of your exponent. And then if you have uh, an exponent on what's underneath your radical sign, that is the numerator. So another way that it, this might be written, you could have the nth root of x and this whole thing could be to the mth power. And that also equals the same thing, x to the m over n. So the first step in simplifying this radical expression over here is to notice that 30 and 14 have a common factor of 2. And so you can simplify this or reduce it. And technically, you could reduce it right here, although that's a little weird. You should know why. And the reason why is because these this rule over here, because of the way that you can rewrite any radical um, into an, an exponent. So if we do rewrite this, our base is x, and then our m value is 30, and our n value is 14. So we get x to the 30 over 14, and then we can just reduce that like any old fraction. So we get x to the 15 over 7. Now we're going to convert it back to radical form. So the 7 is the index. So now we have the 7th root of x to the 15th, and we still need to simplify this. So you can see from the beginning, if I would have just canceled the 30 and the 14, like a fraction, reduced it, what goes into both 30 and 14, you'd end up with the same thing. So that's a little shortcut. Um, but this rule is the reason why. All right, so now when you have the 7th root of x to the 15th, what you want to do, since it's a 7th root, is you want to uh, use the fact that the 7th root of x to the 7th is just x. So you want to see how many x to the 7th um, you can break the x to the 15th up into. So if we break this up, x to the 15th is x to the 7th times x to the 7th times x to the 1st, or just x. Remember, when you're multiplying, uh, you would add the exponents. And then there's another rule that you're going to use to finish this that you may uh, just do without thinking about it, which is um, the nth root of AB equals the nth root of A times the nth root of B. In other words, if you have two things multiplied together under your radical sign, you could split it up and deal with them separately. So in this case, this is the same as the 7th root of x to the 7th times the 7th root of x to the 7th times the 7th root of x. Well, we know the 7th root of x to the 7th is just x times this one's just x. And we have the 7th root of x. So we can finish up and write that as x squared on the outside, x times x, times the 7th root of x. And that would be your final simplified answer. Just to reiterate this fact over here of why this works, if you use the rule that we talked about, and rewrite the seventh root of x to the seventh as a fraction in fraction form, you would get x to the seven over seven, which is x to the first, which is x. So whatever your index is here, that's what you want to use to determine how to break up what's underneath the radical. And if you see that you can reduce these, you want to do that first. I could have broken this x to the 30th up and take in, uh, use my index of 14, but then at the end I would have had something that could reduce. So, I mean, I guess you could do it either way, but I would, I would suggest reducing these first and then simplifying what's underneath your radical. Hope that helps.